Welcome back to Stories from the River with D'Angelo Burse. We, we learned a little bit about who you are and, and why we're talking today. And, and now let's get a little bit more into the narrative identity topic and the Elevate Your Purpose series. Are you ready to go, D'Angelo? Yeah, let's do it. Let's what? do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's yeah, run it yeah, back. Yeah. Here we go. All right. Welcome to Stories from the River, a show in which we go behind the scenes at Broad River Retail. Let's now talk about like what you came to speak to Broad River about. Okay. You, you came, this is really the follow-up to that Elevate Your Purpose series. We have an Elevate Your Purpose series and we bring in you know, dynamic keynote speakers mm. who, who have a specific skill set or knowledge to share with our memory makers. And so y- you were chosen to come in and, mm. and you did two sessions, I believe one in Fort Mill yep. and, and one in Four Oaks and, and uh, full rooms in both uh, yeah. on-site uh, yeah. places. And then, and, and so tell us about uh, those experiences, the Elevate Your Purpose series, kind of what the directive to you was and then and how you tried to approach it. I'm sure we're going to get into kind of yeah. n- your talk, your narrative identity and, and, and how you crafted that talk. For sure. Uh, first off, I, I, I love how much emphasis your organization places on purpose. You know, um, ever since I've known you and been, uh, you know, familiar with your organization, I think that's what, that's what sticks out, mm-hmm. right? Even, you know, uh, you know, reframing the idea of employee or team member to memory makers that's right. is, is, is incredible. Thank right? you. Um, I haven't seen it anywhere else, you know, and so, so, so kudos to you, man, on that. Um, so yeah, you, you, I think Risha reached out and said that you guys were doing another uh, purpose series. And you know what's interesting? I think you, well, of course, you know about this, but uh, I, I think her grandmother showed her a video of me, right? Something like that, you know. And uh, she brought that to you and you, you guys, and you guys said that hey, we know him. You know? Mm-hmm. So that was pretty dope. Oh, that's funny that we yeah. connected it, the dots it, that way. Yeah, and that's how I knew that it was something greater behind it. Yeah. You know? Well, when they when they brought your name as a potential candidate, I said. Oh, I know D'Angelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've met yeah, with D'Angelo. Yeah. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, I haven't even got the shirt he's, <laughs> he gave me. So, uh, yeah, he'd be great. So. That's right. That's right. And so I was already uh, working on my book, and, and I'm about halfway done with that. And I just finished up chapter two, right? And so I just saw, you know, synergy between what I had just written in chapter two and your idea of elevate purpose. Mm-hmm. Right? And so what I did was is I connected narrative identity to to purpose, because I think that essentially they can be one in the same, mm-hmm. you know, uh, they don't have to be, but they can be one in the same. And so I titled my talk, Elevate Your Narrative Identity. And then I showed how by elevating your narrative identity, essentially what you do is you elevate, you elevate your purpose, mm. you know, but it all takes um, intentionality, you know, there, there has to be a deliberate decision. Um, because your narrative identity is being written, whether you are consciously aware of it or not. Okay. That begs the question, yeah. what, when you're talking about narrative identity, ah, yeah. what is narrative yeah. identity? Yeah. Like, let, let, pull the thread back on that a little okay. bit. Okay. All right. So narrative identity is an internalized, evolving story about who you, about who you are and how you came to be who you are. Mm-hmm. Right. It's so it's internalized. It's kind of, um, you know, it's, it's, it's existential. It's in you. It's something that, 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 that you create. Um, and then it's evolving. And so it's changing, it's being morphed, you know? And so what we do is we, we, we weave together our reconstructed past, our perceived present and our anticipated future. So it's almost like we take our past, we take our present and we take our anticipated future. We put those things in a crock pot and we turn them on. Mm-hmm. You know? And so that's what narrative identity is. It's, it's an internalized evolving story and and i'm not smart enough to think about this right i I borrowed this from some other psychologists dr dan mcadams from northwestern and 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 he discovered or or created narrative identity because identity is kind of one of those fuzzy things like if i ask you what is it it's kind of hard to put your finger on you know and so he asked his students he said well if you could pitch your identity what would it look like Mm -hmm. and they threw a bunch of things on the board Mm -hmm. And essentially what they came down to was that it would look like a story. Mm. And if you really truly consider it, everything that we, um, any, 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 anything that we may uh, use to describe our identity, essentially it does fall into some kind of story, mm-hmm. right? Um, 
you know, even when we started, you asked me about me and all I told you was story, right? To describe who I am as a person. And so that's what narrative identity is. it internally driven or externally, or are there external factors that craft your narrative identity? Yeah, so a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, but ideally, what, what's the ultimate, uh, I, I guess the, the, the potter of the clay is the internal factor, mm -hmm. right? And so um, all of your experiences, your environment, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and, and everything around you is, is what essentially kind of creates yeah. this narrative identity, you know? So, seems like it's a lot of nurture versus nature. No, it's both. Okay. Now the outcomes of that could be, could be more, um, well, I talk about another concept in my book. I don't want to give it away. Okay. I think that that nature versus nurture, um, first of all, I think that it's a, it's a false dichotomy. I don't think that you have that, that, that it should be set up that way. I think it can be both and not, mm -hmm. not, not either or, mm -hmm. right? So nature and nurture, mm -hmm. but in my book, I offer another one. You mm -hmm. know, so nature, nurture, and something else. And uh, I think that- Well, you just, just have to wait for the book to come out? wait for the book to come what out. What is the name of the book? What's the top book about? Yours to Design. Yours to Design. Create, uh, constructing a life that's meaningful. Okay. You know. And when's it coming out? So the idea is to be, to this book, to, to be out around fourth quarter, late fall. Okay. And what was this chapter two? Stories We Tell Ourselves. Stories We Tell Ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Great for the podcast, yeah, yeah. Stories from the River. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> we've got this phrase- well, I've got this phrase I like to use, and it's kind of become something we, we say a lot at the river. Um, purpose begins with identity. And, and if I used, or if I replace identity with story, uh, purpose begins with story. How do you respond to that phrase? Do you think identity informs purpose or purpose begins? I, see, I think identity, I, I, this is why I love this talk. I think identity is so powerful. I think it can be your North Star. I think when you have those bad days, when you get off the uh, tra train tracks, so to speak, or wherever you're going, the direction for your life, that identity becomes your GPS coordinates of where it gets you back on the tracks. Yeah. The long term, like where you're going, you, you got to have the right identity and a, a truth based identity, not a false base, not a false based narrative. Right, yeah. yeah and, and, and that identity will help keep you on the straight and narrow of where you want to be or who you want to be more times than not over the long period of time of your life. Yeah. Um, and so when I say purpose begins with identity like your purpose begins with kind of knowing it, your, your true identity also with some elements of deliberation right being mm -hmm. deliberate mm -hmm. and intentional about your identity right because your identity can just it, you, we could flip a coin and it could just be whatever it is mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying purpose is about you know if you remember in the talk i, ind I indicated that purpose is about directing toward an intentional end mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. So if anything is directing towards an intentional end, it has to have intentionality to begin with. Mm -hmm. There has to be intentionality to direct it. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so if purpose is about identity, then that means that you have to be intentional about what your identity is, mm -hmm. you know, or who you become. Okay. You take out identity, you take out intentionality, then you no longer have purpose. Okay. And so this is, you know, I, if, if you recall, I don't know if you were there, Charlie, but I, I, I put forth a uh, meaning, meaning why purpose analysis, mm -hmm. right? And so meaning involves um, understanding value and significance. Why is your compelling reasons? And then, um, and that's in the, and that's in a center of meaning and purpose and mm -hmm. purpose is about directing toward an intentional end. And so essentially your compelling reasons, your why is a connector for meaning and purpose. Got it. If you don't have those compelling re reasons, then you're rolling the dice on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you're rolling the dice, then now you got randomness. And since you have randomness, you cannot have purpose. Yeah. Yeah. The philosophical background <laughs> just came out right there. Like some, some people are going to have to like, go, go rewind that. Uh, go, go hit the couple uh, rewind clicks back and make sure you listen to that again and take some really good notes. Hey, you had everyone to elevate your purpose. Yeah. Take a selfie. That's right. That's what, right. So I want to ask you about the selfie exercise. What's that okay. all about? So narrative audit. So when I was working on chapter two of my book, um, it, I discovered it by accident, but I think it was pretty profound, and especially based on the feedback that I've been receiving. Um, and that is, is that at, you can identify, now not all, well, let me just say this. You can identify various stages of your life, certain narratives that have showed up, right? if that content is there. And so what I did was I had them to take a, to, to, to go back to old photos of their self mm -hmm. and examine the narratives that maybe 
existed around that photo. Like friends, family, good memories. Um, yeah, or even yeah. the stories that you told yourself. Okay. Right? And maybe even a story that you were telling others. Okay. You know? And so if you could identify that, right, uh, then now you can do, you know, you do a narrative audit. And so the selfie was about, okay, it's hard to, you know, this, this, this idea of decentering, you know, this is another psychological term where you kind of step outside of your own self and step outside of your emotions and, you know, and, and, and look at it um, uh, as an objective observer, right? And you kind of see this in mindfulness. But this is really what it is. It's like, okay, if this person who I'm looking at right now, it wasn't me, right? What would I tell this person, you know, about the stories that I just discovered in my narrative audit? Mm -hmm. But this person is me, right? But it's hard to decenter in the current environment, mm -hmm. right? So it's hard for me to do it right now in the current. So that's why I had them to take a selfie, you know? So they um, could be separated from themselves. Separated from themselves. Okay. And then they could look back at a, at a, at a you know, in, when, at a later time okay. and see that moment, right? Okay. And see what, what stories resonate with what, who they were telling them, telling them. So you've talked about this narrative audit. Yeah. What is a narrative audit? Yeah. Analyzing past episodic content, and I can break that down, to determine um, a, a narrative theme, all right? So, or your, of your life. Of your life, okay. right. Um, and so episodic just means it, it, it memory. So I'm asking about memory, memory makers, right? But I'm asking about a specific kind of memory, memory, episodes, experiences. Mm -hmm. That's what episodic is, right? And so I gave them a difference, the difference between semantic memory and episodic memory and declarative memory, non-declarative memory, right? Those things. So that's what a narrative audit is, is wherever there's memory content of a certain form, then you can look at that. And then you can analyze that memory content, okay. you know, and that's why, that's why you, um, I had them look at past photos of themselves. Okay. You know? And then I had some specific questions that they had to address. I yeah. can't tell you those questions okay. right yeah, here. Yeah. So if you don't ask me, um, some specific questions to address and then, um, and then you just repeat the process. Got it. You get what I'm saying? And, and what is the end goal? The end goal is number one, to activate self-awareness, mm -hmm. right? And, and, um, and also to become an architect. To become okay. an architect Got it. of you. That's really powerful. Yeah. An architect of you or of your narrative identity. That's right. That, okay. Have you ever read any of Daniel Kahneman's books? I have. Yeah. 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 And, I'm familiar and, with Daniel Kahneman. Yeah. And doesn't he. Thinking fast, thinking slow. Yeah. And doesn't he go into, um, like, are all of those episodic memories or experiences accurate? No. Do we, do we remember them? No. I, it's yeah. reconstructed, right? Okay. So we're reconstructing this past and know there. Uh, sometimes we we have these, um, uh, I forget what it's called. I don't know if it's false false memories, but yeah. um, we have these, yeah, we, we're, we're not remembering them all the time accurately. And that's, and that's what I showed your people is that there are some memories that are very accurate, okay. mostly semantic, you know, such as knowing that's a pen. That's pretty mm -hmm. accurate. I'll yeah. never forget that. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Um, episodic memory is a little fuzzy and sometimes yeah. we got to be careful with that. And who, based off whoever was there, each person may have a different, uh, recollection or That's experience right. with that. That's right. Okay. Really good stuff. And I, I'm, I'm sure you've done a lot of work reconstructing your own narrative identity as well. Correct? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. All right. That's all we've got the time for episode two on narrative identity. So catch us wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Google, Amazon, yeah. Spotify, or on YouTube. We're on YouTube. Stories from the River with D'Angelo Burst. Come back next week. We're going to get more into the Q&A with D'Angelo. You, you going to come back and do one more with I us? I would love to, man. I would awesome. love to. Yeah. Let's do it. Thanks for listening to Stories from the River. To check out more episodes, visit storiesfromtheriver.com. Join us again next week. And remember to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast.